My name is Jason Miller, founder of AspenNow Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 4,339 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of AspenNow without your consent. Hey everyone, welcome back. Just wanted to mention one thing before we get to today's segment that I've been using community a little bit. So if you are a subscriber, you might see polls that ask different questions. If you want to, go ahead and respond to those. It'll help me make decisions on what kind of content to uh, enhance the user experience with in the future. Today we're going to talk about how to fire SLAs retroactively. So if you haven't dealt with SLAs before, you'll know that uh, it can be kind of complex. And the basic scenario that I'm going to cover today is an application such as incident management, which seems to be one of the most popular ones out there, is part of ServiceNow's original core offering, um, ITSM. And what we're saying in this scenario is that it was deployed and there were no SLA definitions configured. Now there are some out of the box ones that do come with uh, incident management, but what we're saying here is that they weren't configured um, to the environment that you're operating in. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, just the creation of a couple of incidents here without SLAs. And then we're gonna create an SLA and we're gonna have it attach afterwards, after the incident has already been resolved. So I'm just gonna type in one called uh, Jam Retroactive. I'll even put the number one afterwards. I'm going to make the category Aspen because that's going to be part of our SLA definition. We'll hit save and then we're going to um, let, we'll let this one sit. We'll create a copy of this one. Now I'm going to create a second one, Jam Retroactive 2. And I'm going to click save. So now I'm going to take these incidents, put them into a list, and we'll see here 21 and 22. Show after rape. So now I'll change both to resolved. Great, tell us that it resolved. Uh, that was one nice way to get out of having to put in that resolution information, at least for me. So we can take a look at our like our task SLAs and see if any have fired on these. So we don't have any for 21 or 22. I'm just going to sort uh, on the created column going descended. Nothing here. Great. So now let's go and create, I'm going to get rid of these other ones that I had created earlier. Uh, yes, I did test this out beforehand. Now we'll create an incident SLA definition. So we'll go to SLA definitions. Create a new one. Okay, so now we're going to put in something like uh, retroactive. What was our start condition? Category is Aspen. Probably in real life you'd put something else in here like priority is one. Um, active is true or states are blah 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 whatever then for our stop stop condition I'm going to put in state I usually do is one of that way in case you know it just depends on what we're talking about here in terms of you know what how you want this to you know, trigger the stop condition uh, whatever we'll call this resolution here type is SLA default flow I'm going to put in a duration of, I don't know, 10 minutes. And I'll make this 24 7, so no schedule. Now I'm going to click Save. And then we'll navigate over to the Task SLA table. Task SLA table is what? It's basically all the SLAs that have attached to the parent record. The parent record will be on a table that extends tasks or is the task table itself. Remember that if the table doesn't extend task, you can't do SLAs on it. Okay, so you can even go individually and take a look and make sure that there are no SLAs. 
Just want to prove it to you guys. Wonderful. At this point, we're going to check both boxes. So we filtered. We have the incident records that we want to run SLAs on. And that means retroactively. They don't have any SLAs right now. Click on repair SLAs. It'll ask me if I want to continue. I click OK. It'll run this. Okay, so now we're repairing the SLAs. The process is in motion. Keep in mind, if you're doing thousands of these records, it could take a while. We can go ahead and take a look at the logs. Now the logs here are going to show you that all we have are after uh, the SLA repair was wrought. So if you notice, um, you only have two there that are listed as after repair. That's perfectly normal for this scenario. Uh, when you run this, you might have before repair, after repair, if you're dealing with incidents or records that already had the um, SLAs attached to them. So as you can see there, they've attached. Voila, magic has happened. Fantastic. So we got everything um, in the SLA, or excuse me, in the incidents or attached to the incidents and uh, calculate it correctly, it looks like. Let's talk a little bit about thousands and thousands of records or a mass scale endeavor or application where you, you have a bunch of incidents. Here I have, what, 94, 95 incidents in this list, that's fine. But you might have to fire these retroactively for thousands and thousands of records. Now, if you noticed in the solution, I had you checking the boxes and then doing repair SLAs, which is fine. One thing you can do is you can modify the show option via sys property. Uh, this one right here, glide.ui.per underscore page. But if you try this with like 50,000 records, I can tell you it's gonna take forever for this thing to load. And then also you're gonna run SLA repair on top of that. Um, so it's just something you're gonna wanna consider on how to do this. That's why I recommend doing this in a sub-production environment. And then what you can do is bring everything up the task SLA table, all the records um, via uh, import XML. But that's up to you to decide how to do that. Um, again, you know, you'd probably have to do like a downstream clone to get all the data matched up uh, between production and like your sub production environment in terms of the records on the incident table. Um, so if we take a look at this incident list, you know, we'd want this to match um, from the time that the SLA, the new SLA definitions were put into place all the way back to when the application first started. So just one thing to consider. If you didn't have that many, um, you could just simply go to the list like I showed you and run it that way. So there, there are many ways to do it. Now one thing that you'll notice with the task SLA table is if I filter here, you're going to see this related link, repair all filtered SLAs. Now you could take a stab at recreating this on the actual incident table, but that's some pretty heavy developer type stuff and you're gonna have to like unwind the code and all that. So I'm not sure how much work would go into that, but th what this does is um, says everything that's filtered. So if you had a thousand in your filter, you could just click on that and it'll show you that box and then you know you could run it. So it just depends on how you want to approach this. So those are a couple of different ways to do it. But I always recommend doing things in a subproduction environment first and then bring it up. So just to recap, we'll create the SLAs in the subproduction environment. Then we're going to deploy them to prod, right? So like incident management had been deployed for like a month or two. And then we said, OK, we create our SLAs. We tested them. We bring them to prod. We're going to navigate to our list like I just showed you. So I went to incident.list in our filter nav. And then I filtered the records which needed the SLAs. I selected the records and then I ran, uh, clicked on repair SLAs in that box. And that's pretty much the solution to get them to fire retroactively. If you found that you learned something today, um, go ahead and click like. And also don't forget to subscribe. My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.